This country reminds me a lot of the book of Psalms and how David always praised God and with all his creation and just the beauty of all around us is just, you know, all inspiring. Switzerland was a, a great experience for all of us and I mean it was good for me spiritually to see that you know the little things that we do can uplift people um, in just the tiniest ways and um, it felt really good to you know be there with other Christians and that to know that people far away overseas are worshiping God just like we are today. It's not only just people in Ohio that worship God, it's people all over the world. I mean, sometimes when we're in America, like, we feel like religion is dying out and people are abandoning church, but in reality, compared to being in Europe and seeing how little churches there are and how little people attend those churches is really something to take away. What I really, really hope that just overall that they got out of it was just, like, some excitement for the Lord. We are very grateful to everyone that gave us the ability to come here and, and spread the word and create good fellowship with the church here. I think the most encouraging thing was just seeing uh, all the young people work hard and put in the effort and uh, now seeing it pay off with the VBS that we've done and the English conversation that's gone really well. You know, I, I got to see the, the universal nature of God's Word that I got to see how the Gospel and the Bible um, and, and God shape people just the same way that we're shaped here in the U.S. It has the same impact on, on those far away. What's the dilemma, Colt? There might not be a cell tower around here. <laughs> How do you feel, Aaron, after getting off the flight? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, I don't need to secure the meat, though.
I was really nervous and really excited and I also felt like we were like I don't know going into it I felt as if I was about to do this huge favor for this community and this church and so I I think the first day that I got there I was thinking oh yeah we're here the Americans we're here to to help your church woohoo yay for us but as that day kind of went on I was I was like, you know, I'm, it's not me that's going to be the one, you know, influencing this trip. Well, there were a couple of goals. One goal was to help our young people understand something about mission work in the classic sense of the word mission, where someone goes far away to a, a faraway land that's very different from where they're from. And we wanted our, our young people to get that experience and to to have the opportunity to get away, and be away from everything that they knew, and be in this new place with new people, and then help to spread God's word. Yeah, we uh, wanted to come here to, number one, encourage the Christians that are already here, since they have a small group. Uh, we wanted to hopefully, possibly get them some uh, publicity and some, some contacts, and just advertise the fact that the, the church is here in tune. And we wanted to also work with uh, a lot of the young people, um, some that have uh, kind of fallen away, and we wanted to encourage them to come back and fellowship with the church. And uh, so far, it's, it's been very positive with what we've done with the young people. Okay, let me open this curve, tap it A, count it Welcome to every English speaking person. <laughs> I want to welcome you all from. <coughs> Ohio, United States, for this working week with us. I know you've been working hard for this week, and we've been waiting long for this time to come. It always seemed far off, and uh, now it's here. Definitely, I'd say the first day that we were there, the Sunday, um, because I mean, we had church services in like this restaurant that one of the people let us use that wasn't their usual church building. And so we were sitting on these stools and like just kind of making seats wherever in this old restaurant and the speaker was on stage. And um, we d were all kind of like, well, this is cool. We didn't know what to expect because a lot of them didn't speak any English. And then when we started singing, there were like two song leaders, some doing English, some doing, you know, the foreign. And we started singing this one song that we both recognized, and we sang it like bilingual in both languages. And that was like so beautiful. I had goosebumps. Like Taylor said, that that song that we sang was in German and English was awesome. That was when I really realized, okay, this is about something much bigger than what can I do for these people. Switzerland is, is a, a country uh, that is about uh, three, you know, you can put three of Switzerland in Ohio. And Ohio has 11 million people, and Switzerland has 8 million people. You guys are really lost for an hour. Yeah, over an hour. We saw the whole city. Right we weren't here. lost. We were just driving <laughs> around. Here. I did not even. I didn't even let up on the clutch. Because I remember. You, you, no, you didn't, man. You, yeah. The thing didn't move. That's why you remember. I know. It, well, it's because I didn't let off the clutch. It, this is telling me to go oh, straight. Go that way. <laughs> Uh, the, the driving here has been a little bit different uh, with the, uh, the manual cars and we've, we've had to get used to that and when I say we, I mean me, uh, but uh, so far we have not wrecked and that, is, that has been good.
We've, uh, the car has only smoked once. So I think that's a positive thing, really. I saw a sign. Yeah, he's got it in third all the time. He's falling, Ivan. When we picked up the rental vans at the airport, and there were sticks, standards. So we are having a contest to see who can not stall the vans. Well, let's say that I'm in the lead. Let's see if Keith is stalling. Oh, 80! <laughs> hey, it's on the way. It's because you guys are watching. Let's see if not. He's starting to. He's at 80. 80 bones for Keith. You should give him five bucks just yeah. to make him obliged to pay. No. We're going to wait on her. I don't want you to stall it. Here, man. Oh, man. That's another buck. I do. I'm filming. 16 stalls in two and a half days. I know. <laughs> We did a lot of singing in Switzerland, to say the least. Um, it was a good way to um, get the mission out there and to show people in tune that um, there was a congregation there with open arms, you know, ready for anyone to come in. Um, we did a lot. We went around town and we um, we would sing, you know, in the town square and we sang at a train station when people were coming off trains. Um, so we did a lot of singing. We did some German songs and some English songs. So sometimes we got some looks, but maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> there was a lot. There was a lot of singing. There was a lot of singing in public. <laughs> I've never been in choir or... I've never even sang karaoke, probably. And so I was nervous about singing in front of people, and we were singing in front of people who didn't know what we were even saying. <laughs> and I, at first I had a really bad attitude about it, and probably. And as the week went on, I, again, I realized, you know, Lane, this trip is not about you. And I started to kind of enjoy um, the time that I was getting to spend with the group, because that, that really kind of made us feel unified. I do not think I have a very good voice at all, but God doesn't, you know, that doesn't matter to him. As long as you're praising him, he doesn't care what you sound like, because he, um, he gave everyone, you know, a unique voice to each person. Uh, we wanted to hopefully, possibly get them some uh, publicity and some, some contacts and just advertise the fact that the, the church is here in tune. The reminder we have all around us right now of your creation. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to sing and we hope that uh, those listening and passing by hear what you're singing To see what that life can be like where that's, that's really all that you're about when you're there. And, uh, and, and many kids compared that to themselves when they're back home and, and said, we should be like this when we're at home. So that was, that was really good. And then secondly, obviously our goal was to help the congregation there, to help the church. Uh, they had some needs. They um, are very, they're small and they have some young people and some older people and, and they just needed help with things. They needed physical help, they needed um, help with a VBS. We helped them do a VBS. They'd never done a VBS before. They didn't, probably didn't even know what a VBS was until we did it. And I think they really found that to be, a, how, could see how that could be a useful tool for their congregation to introduce Christ to others. Is that, I forget how to pronounce it. Right. That's not that messy. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not camera shy. I was born for the camera. Look, these books.
Um, one time we sang in a um, in the retirement home, I believe it was. I'm not really sure, but we served them breakfast and everything, and we sang a few songs for them. Yeah, the VBS is going well. I think we started out with six kids, seven kids, something like that, and we had 10 yesterday, so we're hoping for a bigger number today, and um, if not, we still gave a VBS to the church here at Toon that they would have never received if we weren't here. Hello. Hello. During VBS, I, I did spend a lot of time with the children and helped um, with crafts because the children like to eat all the crafts that we gave them. So I tried to help keep the kids under control while the parents could have some free time and talk to the other parents. <laughs> Maria and Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her to draw a face. Oh. Come on, and shoot her. Going into the mission trip, I was, I was pretty nervous because when we started doing the training in the classrooms, it was like challenging. Like we read out of the book and we had Americans pretend to be foreign and like do the practice with us, but they posed some difficult like religious questions to try to prep us. So I was prepared for, I mean we didn't know what to expect because we've never done it before, but when we started studying with the people, um, it was it was a lot, I mean, it was harder and easier in some ways. Like, it was harder because they really didn't know English. Like, they were really trying to speak, like, and we had to, like, describe certain things, and it could get a little tricky. This, uh, this the story? Uh, expert in the law who okay. asks Jesus what to Oh, okay. Professions, basically, like, uh, different jobs people have, and it talks about some of the people that, um, help the Samaritan man so like what are some of the like types of people like in this area that people look more like towards like all oh, those are really good jobs like they get paid. he said teacher what must I do to get life forever Jesus said to him what is written in the law love him with all your heart all your soul all your strength and all your neighbor mind. is that is that the same word as my neighbor who lives in the same house as me? I think I read the book of Luke three or four times before we went because that was what the Friends Speak book was based off of. That was pretty nerve-wracking. It was nerve-wracking talking to someone who already knew English about the Bible, but going to another country where they speak a mixture of German and other languages was really scary. Do you understand what Samaritan is? Yes. Said to the others that they would know what the Lord wanted from him and they went uh, yeah. to the house. He heard music and dancing. Oh, dancing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I got there, I don't know, I just had this sort of peace. We didn't have to go just one on one. We had we always had at least one other person with us and the, the people who we got to speak to um, had at least a general knowledge of who Jesus was or what the Bible was so that made it a little easier I wasn't I wasn't being asked some of those really tough 
what is the meaning of life questions. Um, but it was good because we got to teach the people some English and we also got to kind of show them how to study the Bible or what to be thinking about when you're reading the Bible or how you can talk to it with your friends, spread it around to not just people who already know who Jesus is. Snack time. Let's have a prayer and then we will get snacks and juice. This was the second song sung, sung at my baptism by these guys. And I still can't sing it without tears in my eyes. <laughs> these, these verses have meant more to me lately because I feel like, uh, and you, you all here know my father, and I feel like these verses really um, speak to him right now because this is really how he feels. Working hard most of the day, nine to in the morning till about ten at night. But we're having a little bit of fun in between. thankful to have had them for this <coughs> period of time. Help that the seed that was planted may be able to grow. 
I definitely feel like we had um, impacted them. Um, they definitely really enjoyed the VBS. Um, I could really tell that because Ivan, the minister over there, he um, he was asking a bunch of questions and wondering, and so that was a good. So hopefully, they can uh, continue and do it next year by themselves. I did not sign a waiver. Don't, don't, don't show this to my wife, she'll know I know how to do it now. <laughs> she'll want you to do it when you get the hang. Yeah. I think we definitely made some lasting friendships, and it was cool because I know that over there in Tune, at least, they don't have a very big youth group. I thought it was great that we got to show them that, you know, going to church is cool and studying your Bible is fun. and. You can make a lot of friends and something you can do with your friends and also just like the positive fellowship. You know, I, I got to see the, the universal nature of God's Word that I got to see how the Gospel and the Bible um, and, and God shape people just the same way that we're shaped here in the U.S. It has the same impact on, on those far away, um, the, the Christians that we got to meet there and got to get to know and become great friends with. Um, they were in, much like us in terms of their, their faith and their love and love for each other and, and love for others. you free from burdens you can carry all alone heavy burdens, heavy burdens in your weakness he is stronger in your darkness he shines through when you're crying he's your comfort when you're all alone he's carrying you i get down he lifts me up i get down he lifts me up what i really really hope that just overall that they got out of it was just like some excitement for the Lord because I think that was it, it was needed I think we all need it uh, just that Switzerland was a, a great experience for all of us and I mean it was good for me spiritually to see that you know the little things that we do can uplift people um, in just the tiniest ways and um, it felt really good to you know be there with other Christians and that to know that people far away overseas are worshiping God just like we are today. It's not only just people in Ohio that worship God, it's people all over the world. Every time.